You, you began with four weddings and a funeral to, to cultivate and have offered to you this persona that we now think of as a, as a Hugh Grant sort of persona on screen. But before that, I was so surprised to see that, that aspect of you come forth because in movies like Impromptu, you were, you were the pursued. You were, you were more, uh, uh, I guess you would say, uh, I, not so, no, I wouldn't go so far as to say passive, but you're definitely not. Uh, Judy Davis is a, a whirlwind in that. Yeah, 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 she is. She's the man, and I'm very much the uh, innocent little flower <laughs> that she's trying to deflower. Uh, Was that a case of just, uh, you know, I, I, I try to, to ask actors this every time I talk to them, how does it happen that you are known for a particular thing, and then there will be a phase of your career where you're known for another particular thing, and then there will be yet another, and all, I always wonder how much control do you have over it, how much foresight is there? Is there a design, or is it just cosmic forces randomly <laughs> <laughs> well I think it's a bit of both I mean it, with me the lovely thing about Four Weddings coming along was that it was um, comedic and I had um, the only thing I felt I was v remotely useful in in terms of acting was if there were some jokes around I was quite good at knowing where they are and trying to bring them out and I uh, concurrent with that whole career I'd had up till then uh, doing films and television I'd had a comedy show with two friends which was on my real source of pride and passion and uh, and so when I went off to do these films which are rather serious you know I put on my serious face as best I could but really I, I, I thought I'd be more comfortable with a few jokes around and uh, and so that was the good thing about Four Weddings when that, that's just that was uh, I felt like I'm more doing something that I can do which other people can't do whereas if it's deep dark Strindberg you know Ray Fiennes will do that better so uh, to a certain extent uh, it's not typecasting it's just doing what you're best at mm -hmm. yeah. when you were shooting four winnings in a funeral or for that matter when you're working on any film is there a point where you think this could actually work where you have a good feeling about it and you don't think you're just being unreasonably optimistic um, well, I, th I certainly thought that when I read that script. It was a bizarrely brilliant script. I, I remember calling my agent and saying, I think there's been a mistake because you sent me a good script. <laughs> and uh, and uh, which <laughs> happened one more time in my career when they sent me Jerry Maguire. And they said, yes, sorry, there was a mistake. That was meant to go to Tom Cruise. <laughs> But with Four Weddings, yeah, I thought the script was good and stood a good chance. But uh, we were all pessimists. And when we cut the film together, the rough cut looked at it. Uh, me, Mike Newell, the producers, and, uh, we all thought, uh, Richard Curtis all thought it was an abomination. And uh, really? we wanted to emigrate. And, um, <laughs> Why and did you think that? Were you just it just didn't, didn't, didn't look like it was funny or clever or interesting. <laughs> and... Um, and then they took it to Santa Monica and had a screening, and everyone went mad for it. And so it just, uh, we were wrong, and the audiences were right. And that was, a, that was the beginning of what I think of as phase, phase two. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, and then you were, you're doing things like nine months for a Hollywood studio? Well, I did. I, <laughs> <laughs> I suddenly had the, you know, the world at my feet, bizarrely, out of absolutely nowhere. And uh, I took forever to choose something to do. And I remember driving my agents absolutely insane because uh, I didn't really want to do anything. And then uh, this project of Christopher Columbus's came along and, um, and I did it and I very nearly ruined it. I, pr I did pretty much ruin it. I mean, he, you know, he's a genius really, Mrs. Doubtfire and Home Alone and those things. He's a genius at what he does. And there's brilliant people in that film, uh, Julianne Moore and, uh, Tom Arnold and all those people, Jeff Goldblum, uh, and I just, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know why, I think I panicked, you know, having been paid 20,000 pounds or whatever it was to do four weddings and a funeral, if you're suddenly paid millions, you think, well, I better uh, ramp up my performance by 200 times, <laughs> but all that means is you overact <laughs> grotesquely, <laughs> which is what I did. So I'm always, I'm always very apologetic to those people. Right? When, you, when you look back on that period, do you think, uh, are, there, are there any parts of it that you would uh, uh, save uh, in terms of your, yeah, your performance? Which your part? 
Yeah, the 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 mid the mid the post four weddings and funeral. Yes, yeah, no, there's some good yeah. films. Um, well, I did. There were some that I signed up for before four weddings came out. So, an awfully big adventure is a good film, yes. also directed by Mike Newell, and um, the Englishman who went up a hill is a charming film, and uh, uh, well, I liked I liked the thriller. No, no one else went to see it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> extreme measures, I, I'm quite proud of. No, there's plenty in there, and, and of course, Notting Hills. You know, people like that. Notting Hill is fascinating, especially if you watch it right after Four Weddings and a Funeral, because I've developed this sort of, I guess I would say, a uh, grand unifying theory of Hugh Grant. And one, uh, and one part of that is, one part of that is that uh, starting at some time in the mid-90s, your films start to seem like uh, autobiographical in the sense that they're about, they're as much about uh, fame and responsibility as they are the story that they're telling. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> S sorry to lay that on you without warning, <laughs> but Notting Hill particularly, because the Julia Roberts character in that movie is the person who has, is besieged by the paparazzi, can't have a moment's peace, every move she makes is scrutinized, and you're playing the average guy. You're playing the ordinary guy, which is why she's attracted to you, but I wonder if you weren't feeling some of the same things that she was feeling, or that her character was feeling at that point in your career. Well, I, I, I suppose I had, I had had some experience of that. Yeah, but I I, am, I I mean I don't want to put a pin in your theory, but I don't. Oh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that wasn't the reason I did that film. I did I I did that film just because. Well, for the same reason as as any other film I've done, it's literally because it's the best script on the table at that moment, and this one happened to be Notting Hill. It happened to be uh, uh, with, with a brilliant premise. I mean, you know, you can sometimes tell with the one line pitch line. And when it's, you know, nobody bookseller falls in love with the most famous woman in the world, yeah. it's, it's great. I want to see that film instantly. Yeah.